because sometimes your calling will require you to go against the status quo and against the direction of everyone else around you. You'll have to stick out like a sore thumb and people may even ridicule you for your stance. It's time to exhale and be motivated and it's book house. Hello everyone to all of you, Annie's crew. Welcome back to the blue, Annie's blue couch. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me today. Now, before we get into today's conversation, I want to remind you to please like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and as always, please share this video with at least two of your friends. For today's conversation, I want to talk about not living on autopilot. Now, I know when you hear that word, you immediately think about flying a plane. But sis doesn't know how to fly a plane. So we're going to talk about something I do know about, and that's driving. We're not going to talk about makes and models and what's new, what's old, or what's classic with cars, but we are going to talk about the two main types of cars that after my own experiences with both types, I feel like my cars taught me a thing or two about life. And today, I wanna share with you those things that I've learned. In general, there are two types of cars. There's the automatic, which here in the US is the most common transmission type. And there's the manual, AKA stick shift or stick which today in the US is a custom change you have to pay extra for to get done to your car if you want it. And that's because most people prefer the automatic. The automatic is easier to drive. Now, the transmission on both types are basically the same thing. Each transmission has a gearbox with a system of gears and these gears alternate to provide different levels of power to the wheels according to the vehicle's needs. In the automatic car, there's a built-in mechanism to think for you. And the car changes gears without you even realizing that that's what's happening. It automatically does it. But in the stick, on the other hand, you have to know when to change gears and you are in control. The stick will not go into another gear unless you tell it to. And you can damage the transmission if you don't put it in the right gear at the right time. Why am I telling you all of this? I've come to realize that there are two ways to live or drive life. And every day, several times a day, we make the choice to either be in automatic or manual mode. We choose whether or not we let life think for us and just go with the flow or to be intentionally engaged with the process of life and putting in the effort to gear up or down as needed. Now I drive both types of cars, but I especially love my stick. As a girl, I feel like I rule the road when I'm driving my stick. And guess what? I really like pulling up to the guys. Yes, I said it. I like pulling up to the guys and I try to emit like stick shift signal so that they know that's what I'm working with. Because guys, y'all know, you think you're the only ones who can drive, let alone drive a stick. So I like pulling up to y'all and giving you the, you not the only one who know how to drive face. <laughs> anyway, I digressed. So the basic difference between the two types of cars is in its name. In a manual car or stick, the driver of the vehicle manually takes the car through the process that an automatic car does automatically without the driver participating in the process. We have to participate in the process of our lives. There are things that happen automatically, things that God will do for us, things that we don't have to ask for. It just happens. Things like breath. He gives us life, but we have to live the life we are given. We have to choose every day to get up, be intentional, plan, and follow through with our plans. A door may be automatically open for you to get a job, for example, because you know someone in a particular position or you have a connection, you got a hookup. 
But if you don't actually fill out the application or go in for the interview or show up for the job, you will not be able to benefit from the blessing of getting that job. There are other aspects of life that we don't think about. When you sleep, things are happening in your body that you have no control over. Your body replenishes, rejuvenates, and heals itself while you sleep. That's an automatic process. But the moment you wake up, it's time to be intentional. It's time to execute. I mentioned in the beginning that here in the U.S., a manual car is something you pay extra for. And that's the truth. There's a price to pay for being intentional. Because sometimes your calling will require you to go against the status quo and against the direction of everyone else around you. You'll have to stick out like a sore thumb and people may even ridicule you for your stance. But you have got to remain in manual mode. Stay alert, ready to shift from first gear to second gear to third to fourth to fifth. And there are times that being in manual mode is hard. I remember the first time I was learning to drive my stick. <laughs> I shut down in the middle of the intersection. This was a crazy intersection. And I shut down in the middle of this intersection. I mean, panic and fear hit me. I'm like, Lord Jesus, please get me out of this car. Please start this car. Please help me to make it out of this intersection alive. And I'm driving in New York. And if you're from New York, you know. People are not phased by you breaking down per se. They're annoyed that you've broken down on their time. They want you out of the way. They'll drive around you, they'll curse at you. They'll call you all sorts of names. It's kind of funny now, I can laugh at it now, but it was not funny then. It was pretty scary. And let me tell you, there will be moments that you shut down. You'll try to engage, and your transmission will slip and you'll find yourself stuck. But you know what? I had someone in my passenger seat in that moment of anxiety and fear and absolute panic who was as cool as a cucumber. Listen, get you a cucumber friend, someone who you can call when you're panicking to encourage you to stay on track, to encourage you not to quit to not give in to the temptation to just throw a pity party and sulk. It took some time. It was one light after the next. It was red, then it was green, then it was red, then it was green, then it was red again, and it was green, and panic was rising. But my cucumber friend kept me calm. I got out of that intersection, honey, and I've never gotten stuck like that again. I learned a lot in that moment. Most of what I learned had to do with the tools I was given. Now there's one other big difference in the driving process between the automatic and the manual. In the automatic, because the vehicle is built to think for the driver, the driver only has to engage one foot in the process of driving. That foot goes back and forth from the gas to the brake as needed. In the manual car, however, because the driver is in control of taking the transmission through the gears manually, there is something called a clutch that forces the driver to have to use both feet while driving. One for the gas and brake, just like with the automatic, but the driver of the manual car must also engage their other foot to handle the clutch. So there are three pedals to work with, the gas, the brake, and the clutch. The clutch has to be fully down before you go into a new gear, even before you apply the brake. And I really learned how to work that tool in the midst of my scariest moment in that intersection. You'll come to crossroads in life, places where you feel stuck, but really what's happening is God is allowing life to teach you how to use tools he's already equipped you with. I remember another time I was on a hill and there were cars behind me. And when I tell you, I knew I was going to roll back into somebody. So here's the thing with the stick. When your foot is on the clutch and on the brake, the car is not moving. 
but the moment you take your foot off the brake, the car will move. So imagine being on a hill, my foot is on the clutch, I've got to take it off the brake to get it onto the gas. And in that moment, the car is going to roll back if I don't get that process right. Now this time, my passengers were not cool as cucumbers. They were maybe 10 and five years old at the time. And they saw the panic. They heard me say, oh my God, the car's gonna roll back. <laughs> and they were like, oh my goodness, mommy, are you sure you can do this? I'm like, Lord, not again. But I was able to recall what I learned in my intersection moment and applied it to my hill moment and got through with flying colors. I gave myself a pep talk and said, Anissa, you are not rolling backwards. You got this girl. You see, sometimes you need a passenger that's as cool as a cucumber, but other times you have to recognize what you're carrying. You see, rolling backwards was not an option with my precious cargo on board. When you know your purpose demands that you move forward and destiny is requiring that you not roll backwards, when your call is so great, you can't afford to slip up. You can't afford to lose concentration. I remember I said, everybody be quiet. And I turned off the radio. I got my foot on the clutch, got myself in the first gear and got up that hill. And there are times when you feel like slipping backwards and falling back into the pits of depression and worry and fear and anxiety and all those things that you had fallen into in times past. But listen, get your foot on that clutch. And even if you can only do it in first gear, get up that hill. Give yourself a pep talk, maybe even sing a pep song. That moment, I wasn't thinking about a song, but a song just came to mind as I think about giving yourself a pep talk and as I think about encouraging yourself. And the song goes, sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Sometimes you have to speak victory during the test. And no matter how you feel, speak a word and you will be healed. Speak over yourself, encourage yourself. In the Lord, oh, 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 that is such a beautiful song. You know, it's so easy to get into such a routine of the same thing every single day that you drive through life in the automatic zone, on autopilot, and you forget to be engaged in life. Right now on quarantine, I don't know about you, but for me, I'm not driving as much, but I can remember days where I left work, got in my car, and then I was home. And I'd say to myself, what just happened? How did I get here? I didn't remember making turns or stopping at lights. My brain was totally unengaged in the process of getting home. But somehow, I got home safely. I was on autopilot. And you might be feeling like life is on autopilot for you right now. You can get busy just being busy, doing the same things, handling the kids, handling the house, being a husband or a wife, going to church, doing ministry, going to work, coming home. There's a t-shirt I've seen a lot of people wearing. It says, eat, sleep, repeat. You probably have seen it. And many people live life that way for real. Vacation is really the only time to eat, sleep, and repeat. Outside of that time, you need to be engaged in the process of life. Listen, it's time to be intentional. In order to be effective in life, to achieve your goals, or even to set goals for that matter, 
We have to be intentional. If we're not intentional, minutes, hours, days, months, years, decades even will pass us by. And we'll look back and wonder, where did all the time go? If you let life pass you by without fulfilling your deepest purpose and calling, you'll be adding riches to the graveyard and not the lives of the people who you were created to impact. I know I'm not the only one who feels like there's more to do. I know you feel it too. It's time to get up and get engaged. Engage to your purpose, to your calling, to your destiny. You've got to become one with your purpose and do everything it takes to achieve it. Set goals, short term, long term, step by step, day by day and get it done. Until next time, remember, you are beautiful. You are special. Your smile is amazing. And don't let anyone or anything ever make you feel less than who and what God has designed you to be. Annie's crew, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Bye for now. Annie's Blue Couch.